Hey all you beautiful people out there, I am Sam and you're watching Test Driven TV. Today we've got something pretty interesting I think. This is the all new and very new 2024 Subaru Impreza 5 door hatch. And this one is the new trim grade for 2024, the RS. It's got a bigger engine under the hood, sportier treatments inside and out. And so we're going to have a good look at it. We're going to take it for a drive and then I'm going to tell you what I really think. For 2024 here, we have the sixth generation of the Subaru Impreza, and it's been redesigned from the ground up. It may not look like it, but this has got new sheet metal everywhere you look. It's got a new interior, and it also has a new trim grade for 2024, the RS, the top of the line for the Impreza five-door hatch. It's sportier. It has a bigger engine under the hood, 2.5 liters with more horsepower. And as tested, this one is $28,000 and some change. Now you can spend a little bit more with an option package or two, but this is sort of the base price getting into the RS. Now, what does that get you? Well, looking at the front, you can see evolutionary styling from Subaru. There's no question what you're looking at here, but the grill and the headlights, everything's all new. This has LED headlights. This has LED fog lights down in the lower fascia and a number of unique trim treatments for the RS. Coming around the corner, you can see that in the wheels, gloss black 18 inch wheels. And these are wrapped with some pretty nice 225 40 series tires. On the door, you can see the RS badge right here, which really is something new on a Subaru and a lot of gloss black trim as you look around the car. But right here at the rear three quarter view is where you can see a lot of the difference in the 2024 model Impreza, the window line. The window line is different. It's got a different shape, a different shoulder line, different creasing back there. On the roof, you can see here, this has a built-in spoiler that's integrated into that rear hatch, a metallic black trim, LED taillights that have a completely new design. Looking at the lower bumper, I'm really glad they kept this simple. They didn't put a lot of over-the-top, out-of-context design elements there. It's sporty, but it's not trying to convey something that just simply isn't the truth, like some cars we've seen in the sport hatch world. The interior of the Impreza RS is just as unique as the exterior. For 2024, this cabin has been given a complete redesign. And while if you've ever sat in a Subaru in the last 10 years, it's going to look very familiar, I will tell you that in the past, I've sort of criticized the brand for having interiors that were so 10 years ago, so 20 years ago. Well, the good news is they've updated this in a pretty substantial way. While the design essentially looks the same to the eye, all of the little details and the tech in here has been nuanced and updated. The materials are of a good quality too. When you look around, the RS has a number of unique features. I have a leather wrapped steering wheel with red stitching. And look at these seats, some beautiful red and black cloth seats. And I will tell you that they're very comfortable. These are some of the most comfortable Subaru seats I have sat in in some time. They are manually adjustable, but that's okay because they're good right out of the gate. They don't require a lot of getting them here and there to find a comfortable spot. The seating position, very good. Visibility, excellent. And as I sit here and look forward, the steering wheel has paddle shifters on it, some excellent switch gear in terms of quality and tactile use. The instrument cluster does date a little bit. This is a standard two dial cluster with a small digital center screen, not a lot of razzmatazz here, but it works. The center stack is really what's all new here, an 11.6 inch portrait style display. And we'll get into the details here in a minute, but it replaces a lot of the hard controls and buttons for the climate control, as well as the audio system. Down on the console, a nice cubby down in the front with a wireless charger for your phone, a lot of ports, auxiliary, USB, both kinds. And it's just a nice storage spot where you can see your phone when it's down there. Conventional shifter and here behind it, heated seat controls, cup holders down low, 12 volt port, and down in the center, a pretty nicely sized storage area, a little bit larger than a square tissue box. And then another small cubby right here. The rear seat is actually a pretty comfortable space to my surprise for a compact five door hatch. These seats are set for my height about 5'8 with my tennis shoes on. I've got about two to three inches ahead of my knees, so plenty of space. I could have somebody taller sitting in that seat pushing it back and I would still be okay. 
Now, the thing that surprised me is that in spite of the fact that I'm sitting in a car, not an SUV, I have a pretty good seating height. I'm sitting up, my knees aren't perched up. I don't feel like I'm sitting down in a hole and that's always kind of a pet peeve of mine. And so this is actually a comfortable seating position and these seats actually have some pretty good side support even though they're pretty firm. Um, I find that I could probably sit back here on a long drive and I'd be just fine. Now, I do look at the rear of the center console. I do have USB ports, but missing are AC vents, something I'd like to see in any vehicle, but we are getting down in price range here. But for around $30,000, I would hope that they'd be there, but missing nonetheless. Looking at the cargo space, a pretty good size back there for a five-door hatch. Um, I've seen smaller in some of the competitors, especially like the Toyota Corolla hatch has a really high floor here uh, that's laid out very well when you put these seats down you've got an even larger area not quite a fully flat floor but a very usable one at that now underneath the floor you're not going to find a spare tire on this particular model because we do have the larger wheels and the tire combo here you'll have all the tools that you need but an inflator kit rather than the spare this is a very nice interior. I like the fact that for this price range, I've got good quality materials and the tech and all of the switch gear has been updated for 2024. So I can no longer criticize Subaru for having sort of a dated interior. It still looks the same, but if you look closely, it's contemporary. This interior gets five out of five stars. The infotainment system here is all new for 2024, and we've seen this in some of the other newer Subarus of late. This is the Starlink 11.6 inch portrait style display, and the display is fully touch screen, but it does have hard controls on either side for volume tuning and some of the HVAC controls that you're going to be using most often. And that's a good thing. Now, navigating around is not too bad. If you want detailed climate controls, you can simply hit the climate window and it'll bring up the full control set. And, and that will disappear automatically or you can exit out and get back to whatever else. Now, the sound quality on this is okay. It's class average. There is an upspend here. You can get a package for $2,070. It has a Harman Kardon audio system, sunroof, and a few other things. And that's really the package you're going to want if you consider yourself an audiophile. This is a little bit more basic. And in that way, when you look at the backup camera, it's just a single view backup camera. And the good thing is, is there's a lot of menus and screens here for different controls. There's a nice one for some of the off-road and, and car system screens, even though this really isn't an off-roader, it has those same screens you're going to find in, say, a Crosstrek. Overall, I like this new system that Subaru has. This particular one is missing a few features here and there, but you can spend up and get everything else. This system, though, gets four out of five stars. All right, my friends, let's go for a drive. Now, I got to tell you, I don't often get to drive a Subaru that's not lifted up in the air with an off-road suspension like uh, the Subaru Outback, the Wilderness family, and all of those cross treks. Most of the time when I get a Subaru, we're out off-roading and doing that. So when I get one that's lower to the ground like a car, uh, that's always a fun little exercise. And this is actually the first Impreza that wasn't a WRX that I've gotten this opportunity to test drive. So I've been kind of looking forward to that this week. And so basically what we have here in the sixth generation is an evolution of Subaru's chassis design, McPherson struts up front, independent rear suspension at the rear, standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, all of the standard stuff that you would expect, and here with a nice lower profile to give us the benefit of the lower center of gravity, cattle guard, that this boxer engine offers. And so we're out here on my favorite back road. It's got a noisy pavement. And the first thing I can tell you right now is that the, the road noise isn't that bad, even with these wider tires. Now, out on the freeway on our 70 mile an hour road test that I do with decibel meter, it was 58.1 for the average, which is about average for, uh, for road noise. It's not high, it's not low, it's right in the middle. And most of that noise is from the tires, very little, if any, wind noise. Now, out here, I find that the suspension has a nice stiff flavor and yet it's supple. The, the tuning of the dampers and the bushings is such that while the springs are stiffer, uh, this doesn't beat you to death. It's, it's not really coarse and really raw. And even with these tires, uh, with their low profile, I find that going over speed bumps and railroad tracks, cattle guards, that they offer a nice supple feel. And steering in this, 
uh, a nice sharp feel. I was actually pretty surprised, and that goes to the lower center of gravity in how the car responds to those steering inputs, but it's a nice light feel. Even on sport mode, they didn't make it too heavy. And so this is a Subaru that you can toss into a corner at speed, and it feels good. It's got a nice sharp response to those things. And so the brakes, even though they're not big performance brakes like you might have on the WRX, I think that they work pretty good for an all around sporty car. And it's just got a nice feel. It's comfortable. It doesn't do anything too high or too low. It's right down the middle in terms of being a sporty hatch. Another corner. <laughs> I like it. I think they've done a good job tuning this chassis. This chassis gets five out of five stars. So let's talk about the engine because getting the RS gets you a special engine in the Impreza. This is the larger 2.5 liter horizontally opposed boxer four cylinder engine. Here, 182 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. And it comes mated to a continuously variable transmission with an eight speed step mode. Well, the question I always like to ask, no matter what all those things say, is how does it go? So I come to a complete stop. We're out in the middle of nowhere and go. Okay, it's a CVT. You can hear it droning on and 60. Now you see a read out there on the screen. That's sort of a non-scientific zero to 60. Air conditioner's on, so it might be a little bit slower than might be quoted or what maybe some of the other outlets do out there. That's why I call it non-scientific. Now the, the power I would say is adequate. And so, you know, if you had the two liter engine, it would be a little bit less than that. And I think the real big thing here that, that gets in the way of this being a visceral driving experience in terms of sportiness is this CVT. Now, yes, it has these paddle shifters here, which give you eight prescribed um, sort of shift points. And what those are essentially is preset ratios in the CVT. They're not actual gears. And so it gives you the sensation that you're shifting gears, but you're not actually shifting any gears. It's a nice toy, but uh, for everyday driving, it's, it's just as, you're just as well to let it do its thing. And it's a CVT. I won't go on about that anymore. So this does have some gas saving features above and beyond that. Auto start stop, you can turn it off. There's a switch right here on the touch screen. Uh, fuel economy, 26 city, 33 highway, and 29 mpg combined in my week with it i got about 27 so pretty close to what's promised in fairness air conditioners on because it is essentially summer here in phoenix arizona now oh cattle guard's coming up cattle guard oh i love those so how we talk about the powertrain in terms of a five star rating system so this is a horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine. They tend to be noisy. That's been my experience with them since the first Subaru I've ever driven. Uh, you know, mechanical noise, not like exhaust sound. So it does have a, a pretty good deal of engine noise. The CVT, it'd be nice if it had a real transmission or a manual here. And, uh, but performance, I would say is middle of the pack. Overall, this powertrain gets four out of five stars. Now I sort of like to lasso everything we've talked about up into a value quotient. And so looking at the price tag, $28,000 and some change, I think this is a pretty interesting package for that price. Now you can spend a little bit more with the aforementioned package with the Harman Kardon audio sunroof and a few other things, but this is sort of the way it comes outside of that major option package. At this price, I think it's an interesting choice in the market because you have standard all-wheel drive here. So if you live in a cold weather state, this is a, a nice car you can drive every day that gives you that traction capability and you don't have to have a big giant SUV to get it. Now, obviously, you can get other vehicles in this class, the Toyota Corolla hatch, there's a Mazda 3 hatch, and there's a couple of others. But this is sort of a nice middle ground, especially with this 2.5 liter engine. The Volkswagen GTI, a little bit more powerful, uh, more expensive, and obviously sort of a step up in terms of performance. But this is a nice, another way to look at that, especially if you want the all-wheel drive. So at $28,000, I look at the value, the warranty coverage here, the quality, all very good. 
and at that warranty coverage, we're at 336 bumper to bumper, five years, 60,000 mile powertrain. That's actually middle of class, I'd say. Hyundai, Kia both exceed that quite well. But this thing is well bolted together. It's solid. So I put value at four out of five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we are at four and a half stars for the review. An exceptional score. And so uh, definitely look at this, especially if you're a Subaru owner or enthusiast. This is a car that's going to give you all of the Subaruisms that you're already happy with, plus updates, especially inside. And uh, the extra power from this 2.5 liter engine isn't bad either. So there you go. The Subaru Impreza RS for 2024. Now, if you like what we've just done here, see our latest video right there, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, Stay tuned.